Good morning and welcome back to another Jack's Tech Corner and Photography Weekly, episode number 54, for Sunday, April the 15th, 2012. Coming up in today's show, our built-in light meter, and we have to understand how to use that built-in light meter. You paid for it. Let's figure it out. Also, understanding highlights and your camera, understanding why we have highlights on the camera, how it can help us out, and why we need that help. Then we're going to talk about controlling ambient light. What is ambient light? How can you control it? And then we have to talk about controlling flash. And then with those two, we're going to wrap in there understanding sync speed and what is that? I know there's a lot of big words in this show this week. Don't run off. I think I can put them in layman's terms for you, and then you can do it with your camera, and you're going to have a much better understanding of why you spent all that money. Uh, it's because there's some features built in there that you're going to want to use to make your life and photography even better. Then we'll have our tribute to our text assignment, and then I'll give you the assignment for next week. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started this week with Photography Weekly, episode number 54. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls of all ages, it's time to start the show this week and teach you a little bit more about photography. That's why we come here each and every Sunday morning, and I tell you what, these shows um, put me on a different edge because it keeps me understanding more and more about my camera and being able to share that with you, you know. Um, it's, I always say it's good to go back to the basics uh, because if you understand the basics, then you're going to understand how to be a better shooter and that's not military terms you know sniper shooter that's a photography term for shooter did everybody find this on your camera now most of the nikon folks out there it's going to be on the very top ordinarily or if you have a d60 or one of those it could be in the menuing system on the back when you're looking at your camera now what i want you to do at this point is I want you to pick the camera up, turn it on, hold it to your eye, and I want you to aim at something in your room. You know, I want you to focus on something in your room. And what you're going to do at that point is you're going to see this next slide here. You're going to see something like this inside of your viewfinder. Now, what this is, this is the exposure meter. Now, on the exposure meter, I'm going to show you some really cool ways of using this today. And maybe not so much the exposure meter, but I'm going to show you some good ways to get some really good exposure by controlling our aperture and our shutter speed and what time we use different ones. <coughs> okay, so what I want you to do here, first of all, is put it on the one dot. The one dot, remember, is spot metering. So, and then focus on something in your room. You know, give yourself a little bit of distance. And what this meter is actually doing, this meter is used for what's known as ambient light. Ambient light is any available light we have, not flash. Okay, so any available light that's not flash or strobe or any form of that light. This is any available light, such as if we're outside. Um, I use this metering mode at a soccer shoot I did yesterday. And it was very, very extremely easy to use. You just pick out your subject. And all you got to do to control this now is move your shutter speed up or down. All right. It's very easy. This is controlled by your shutter speed. So move your shutter speed up or down. All right. So now if you're getting the fill for that, like I said, look in and one of your knobs on your on your camera and let me back up first. Your camera should be in manual mode at this point. And let me explain that a little bit. Let me go through some of these so we just understand how this works. The manual mode such as program 
shutter priority and aperture priority or auto pretty much try to do their best to adjust this this exposure setting for you all right here's why because in aperture mode or shutter priority mode you're giving it a let's say a shutter speed of uh, 250 one over 250th of a second let's say we just have that shutter speed we pick up we have shutter focus the camera is going to say oh wait let me adjust this aperture over here to match uh, that shutter speed it's going to work to give us a decent exposure but we're today working on full manual mode so your camera should be in the M mode and if your camera's in the M mode now is when you look through it and go ahead and use the shutter speed just the shutter speed of your camera to control this <coughs> all right now these are the different metering modes that we are talking about that we've already looked at here on this first slide and these metering modes are spot metering which is dead on and we're gonna look at some examples of this it's dead on next partial metering or center weighted metering <coughs> I refer to both of those as exactly the same because it's going to do the same is how that works all right and the last one is called matrix metering or pattern metering now what that allows you to do is meter the whole entire area and get a good idea of how much light is available to you now let's look at some examples <coughs> when photographing people if you're just using ambient light and nothing else you're going to use spot metering spot metering will allow you to focus on that person and pick out a place you would like to have um, metered for I usually say center mass is where I would usually say the reason I say is because you can get equal and even lighting over that whole person using nothing more than ambient light but you want the camera to be exposed properly all right the next metering mode we're going to look at and talk about here is partial metering <clears throat> or center weighted metering now with center weighted metering we're going to actually use um, basically just that <clears throat> it's going to be center mass of something now I like to use this um, especially when you're doing weddings for a couple two people this works really really uh, good on and here's an example of center weighted metering or partial metering we have a couple we want to expose for them more so than the background so a good way to do this, and a lot of people will tell you to expose for the background, which you can, and then use a flash on them. But if you don't have a flash and you're just using ambient light, go ahead and expose on them. So get your meter, put in center weighted metering, look through the viewfinder, and go ahead and hold your shutter down halfway and look at that meter in there. Adjust your shutter speed up and down until it's dead zero, and then take your shot. Now, a lot of you might be saying, Jack, well, that's fine and everything, but wonder if it's a little bit too dark. If it's too dark, just take this, let's go back to this, and just turn your dial so it goes up to one. Make it one stop brighter. Each one of these are considered a stop of light. Or one, let's just say 1%, 2% to make it easier. It's a stop. If it's too bright... And you're saying, wow, that, that meter didn't do a real good job, then go back. And there's going to be instances of that. Here again, when you're metering this, what's nice about this is she has a white dress on. He has a white shirt on and this lighter suit. So what's going to happen there is it's going to meter and have a pretty good understanding of the balance for that. Here's where you get the issue is when the bride or whoever has a white uh, gown on, and the groom has a black tux or a black suit. Then the meter can get a little bit confused and not know exactly how much light to put out. And that's when you might have to nudge it a little bit one way or the other. And that's how that works. Again, we're not using any light. We're just using the available light. And this was actually with the sun. So it's just sunlight.
Now we're going to go ahead and on this one, we're talking about center weighted metering, which again, partial and center, most cameras only have one or the other. So this would be a good time here, even though it's a person, I told you earlier, spot metering would be good. And the reason I say spot here is because I don't really care about that background being lit or not. It's basically just a solid background. I don't care. This, I'm going to do center weighted because I want to center here or this way because you want that background lit a little bit, right? And you do care. You want that to come in to play, even though I uh, use the depth of field here and I kind of blurt it out a little bit. But you do want to have that available to you. All right. That is correct. Somebody was saying that. Serena said that to move from dark to light, you have to be looking through the viewfinder. When you look through the viewfinder, you'll see this scale inside. Down at the bottom, there'll be numbers telling you your f-stop, your shutter speed, and then you'll see this. So you can actually go ahead and use that back and forth just by moving one of your knobs. And every camera's a little bit different, folks. Okay. The last thing I want to tell you about with metering modes that we have to look at is what's known as evaluation metrics or pattern metering and uh, like I said again the Canon guys are going to have to give us a little bit of help here because I don't know what Canon calls it for the Nikon folks out there the Nikon calls it matrix metering what matrix metering, metering does is it meters the whole entire scene so if I'm taking my camera out of the bag and I have no idea what I'll be shooting say you're just getting to a, an event you're going to a birthday party uh, a wedding <laughs> whatever you're going to shoot. The first thing I would do to have my camera preset is I would leave it in the matrix mode. Because when you first get anywhere, you're going to take shots like uh, if you get to, uh, well, let's say, for instance, a wedding, because I, that's what I do mostly. The wedding, you'd walk in and you're going to take a picture of the inside of the church. You're going to take a picture of something in there. So you want to be able to evaluate the whole scene. Right, we don't want a spot meter for the center because we want the whole scene to be equally lit on that picture. So here's an example, and here's something that will happen to you sometimes with matrix metering. Now, hopefully somebody can see what's wrong with that picture. That picture right there actually uh, is a pretty decent picture. But the camera was trying to meter, and the sky was a little, a little dark that morning. So the camera was actually metering for a darker sky, so it opened it up and left as much light in as possible. What happens? You get a pretty much highlighted or uh, overexposed skyline. Now, I've since has fixed that in Photoshop, of course, but that can't happen to you. So make it a habit when you're taking your pictures to look on the back of the screen. And we're going to talk about that in just a couple minutes here and tell you why that's so important to look on the back of that screen. And to understand what's on that screen and what you need to know. So that is the way the matrix, or the, that's the way the built-in meter pretty much works in a nutshell on your on your camera, and how you would use that. Okay, and and Debbie said on the Canon the matrix moding is called evaluative metering because it's metering the whole entire thing. Thanks, Eric, and this is a good example of what could happen. Uh, but it would be really hard to use spot metering on that scene because you want the whole thing lit. Um, you could try center weighted, but what I should have done, and granted, I, I often tell my wife, we come back from somewhere and I, I do a photo shoot and said, what I should have did. You know, but there's so many uh, concepts with photography and there's so many different things that go on with photography in your head that when you're out there, sometimes you miss something. When I looked at this in my viewfinder and seeing the metering was good and everything was fine, <coughs> I should have went up to and looked at my viewfinder and I should have went maybe two stops darker and see what I got. Played around a little bit. Or as I'm soon going to show you here, we're going to teach you now how to control ambient light with your shutter and teach you how to see things on your camera that's going to teach you more about how to use that camera so this doesn't happen. Or if it does and you look on your viewfinder in the back and you go, oh man, look at that picture. 
you're going to make a couple adjustments and you're going to make that picture look amazing amazing okay but a nice density filter can actually help you out okay what we're going to do here we're going to just take a very uh quick break we're at about the half uh, way mark here through the show and i'm going to go ahead and uh set up here for the next part of the show try to get some of those settings going refill my coffee cup we got about a three minute uh, little advertisement i have to do there and uh this will uh definitely show you our sponsors for these shows and you know what support the sponsors as much as you can i mean i'm gonna tell you go over there and like spend a thousand dollars or something but check their websites out support them uh, even with the smug mug you could even use my link go through there and uh, set up for a free account that's fine i mean there's a lot of stuff in there but support them let them know you came from jack's tech corner and you heard it from here first so we're going to do that and i'll be right back here with you with more learning and talking about your camera and controlling ambient light and we're going to look at some flash so i'll see you back here in just a couple minutes Okay, everyone, thank you for letting me take a few minutes of your time here to introduce our sponsors to you and to make sure that we still have that great relationship between you, myself, and our sponsors so everybody can benefit and you can benefit in the end with some savings. First, let me introduce to you really quick Lightroom for Learning. It's a brand new DVD I have that just came out. It's me, I created it, I produced it, I recorded all the videos. And that DVD is now available. It's called Lightroom for Learning. Or if you can't wait for the DVD to be shipped to your house, I got you covered. Also, if you want to save a little bit of shipping, click on Online Class. And right here in the bottom, it says Introducing Learning Lightroom for, for All. Now, there's the uh, introduction right there. Just click here, and you'll go into the Online Class. All it is is you sign up. It's a self-sign up. You just pay the fee through PayPal, and you're ready to go. There's 32 easy-to-follow videos. I take you from A to Z in Lightroom. So if you think that you're going to be using Lightroom, or if you have Lightroom 4 and you're scratching your head trying to figure it out, now's the time to go ahead and learn that. Next is SmugMug. SmugMug's a great site for you to post your uh, pictures up on. SmugMug will also let you post videos up on there if you wish to do that. Now I use it for the pro site here and the pro site allows me to go in set my own prices. It allows me to create my own uh, front end or my own store like many uh, of sites do but I just felt the SmugMug Pro has that extra professional touch that I was looking for. It's a great site. It's easy to use. They also have a great iPhone app that works great on the iPad for viewing all your pictures on SmugMug and sharing those with other. If you're going to sign up for SmugMug at checkout, please use Jack's Tech Corner for an additional 20% off. Next is Green Screen Wizard. Remember, if you're going to do digital backgrounds, green screening is the way to go, and Ken's the man that you want to see. If you remember a while back, we did an interview with Ken, and Ken's still very, very much in the business. <coughs> and he's working hard to bring us new products each and every day. He has a great product lineup here. If you go in here, there's some perfect packages to get you started relatively inexpensive. Also, there's some free demos if you want to try out green screening. If you've never tried it, try that out. Try it today. And Amazon. Amazon's that website that all of us know and love to save money with. I know I purchase a ton of stuff from Amazon. Almost at least once a week I'm buying something little, you know, either a, a reflector, a deflector, a stand, something that you're picking up uh, relatively inexpensive. So it's Amazon.com. To get to any of those, make sure you use my uh, website here, jackstechcorner.com, and click on the links here on the left. That way the credit comes back to me, and they know that you are watching the shows, and that you're coming from the shows, and they're going to take care of you. So that's it. Let's get back to learning here with Jack at Jack's Tech Corner and Photography Weekly. Okay, very good. That was the ad from our sponsors there. And like I said, uh, Amazon has been real good. And uh, I've purchased stuff recently from Amazon. I'm sure you have. I am currently setting up right now for the next uh, segment here. So you can see how this is going to work. 
And again, I need the cannon uh, shooters out there to help me a little bit. As I'm sure you will. And that's fine there. Alright. If my camera <clears throat> if my camera's going to cooperate with me there. Uh, it did this morning. You know, whenever you do the pre-shows, you get warmed up. Everything just seems to work. Ah, oh, there it's going to work. Okay, what we're going to do now is I have my camera ready right here. And we're going to show you on the back of your camera. I want you to get your cameras out now too because on the back of the camera, there is a little feature on your camera. And I believe the Canon, we worked this out the other night. The Canon, guys, it's called Highlight Alert. And the Nikon, folks, it's called Highlights. Now, you have to turn it on on the back of your camera. There could be a way to turn it on. But what it is, it allows you when you take a picture and the highlights are blown out. Now, wow, what does that mean, Jack? That's, that's pretty big talk. What the highlights are blown out, what that actually means is that it's too bright and you lose all your detail. A few weeks ago, we had somebody on our Facebook page, uh, maybe a month ago now, but they put a picture up and they were trying to fix a nose but the light hit it so hard that there was no pixels in the nose. There was no detail um, because it was blown out. So you have to be able to see that on the viewfinder, look and be like, oh no, highlights. How do I adjust that? What did Jack say? Do I remember? You're going to remember. It's very, very easy to adjust, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we're going to take some shots, and we're going to show you how that works. And what I want you to note on the screen here, here I'm going to bring it up here so I can uh, point out a couple things on this screen. Now what I want to point out to you is there's, there's this little bar right here. I don't know how well you can see it or how well it's coming through um, on the uh, video here. But what this will tell you is, what this is going to actually tell you is that the first one here, the first number, this 20, is my shutter speed. The f-stop right here is the aperture setting on my camera right now and the ISO setting. The automatic white balance is there, so it's telling you the white balance. What I want you to watch in this portion of the show here, this lesson, is the shutter speed. Because remember, I told you earlier, we control ambient light by the shutter speed. That's how we control ambient light. We control it by the shutter speed. So. If we have highlights, if we have areas that's blown out, all we have to do is keep increasing the shutter speed until we get to the point where that highlight is gone. All right. So we're going to take some shots here. And as we take these, we're going to watch how we actually get rid of these highlights. And you can take some with your camera too. Set your camera on that setting. Set it at the lowest f-stop you have, whatever that might be. And then set your shutter speed at 1 20th of a second so 20th and then uh, take some pictures what I like to take pictures of you not really at directly at the light bulb but something in your room it's kind of white where you can maybe make some highlights and pay attention to this here because there could be a assignment coming out of this so it's probably good to take your lens cap off that's probably a good thing now we're gonna go ahead and take a shot here and hopefully everything works out for us And now coming up on our screen here, we're going to turn on the highlights. And let's get this. All right. We'll set it like that. And now the red that you're seeing right there, just think of that as the same way on the back of your camera. A lot of people refer to this as the blinkies. Lack of better terminology again. But what it, the, when it's blinking at you on the back of your screen, what that's telling you is, Highlight alert, highlight alert. You got blown out areas. You better fix this or you're going to get back in your computer and be crying because you took some beautiful pictures of a beautiful bride. Uh, they paid you, you know, $10,000 to do their wedding. And you go home and the bride basically has no gown on because you blew it out all day because you never looked at the back of your camera to check your highlights. You know, so that's not good. That's not a good scenario. They make the viewfinders on the back of the camera. You know what? And people say sometimes, like, well, if you look at that, you must be an amateur. No. If you look at that, you're using a tool to get better details out of your pictures to know what you're going to be editing later on. That's what you're using that for. If you can fix it in the camera, you'll have a lot less editing to do when you get back home. Trust me. I've been there. I've been on all sides of that fence. 
<laughs> okay. Just joking about the $10,000, folks, you know. All right, so what we're going to do here, and watch that top of there, that little bar on there. I'm going to raise my shutter speed up. And we're just going to raise it, um, we're going to raise it to 40. So you see now it's 1 40th of a second. And watch how the red starts to go away. Take a shot. Now let's take a look at this picture. And now look how much little bit of red we got left there. And all I did, I, I gave it two, basically uh, 20 more tenths, I guess it would be. 20 more tenths of shutter speed. So we went from 20 to 40. You could already see that going away. That's how that works. It's very easy to understand. So let's go up again. Now I'd like to go by jumps of 20s. You can go by 10s, but you're going to just be wasting a lot of time. Because remember, this is happening when um, I'm getting ready to shoot. Say if I'm getting ready to do my portrait shoot. Maybe I'm doing some spot metering. Um, you know, you can look through also in a spot meter. But if you see these highlights on the back of your camera, you still have to address it. Even though your spot meter might say it's dead on. If you see highlights and you're taking wedding pictures or birthday pictures, you're getting paid. <coughs> you don't want highlights. So let's try 160th here and see what we get. And now you see it's even getting smaller. All right. So it's getting to be a little smaller. Now. Okay. And Jessica, you said you're lost a little. If you can elaborate on that a little bit. I wish the chat was more uh, real time. But. And you do have to practice this. This doesn't come in a matter of minutes. But this is a nice way to grab your camera. Take some pictures. Look on the back of it to see if there's anything blinking. And then if there's something blinking on the back of the camera and you're using ambient light now, just light out that's available, <coughs> just look at your shutter speed and turn it up. All right. I'm going to show you an instance here where this is also going to hurt you another way. Okay, the red is coming. I'm sorry, folks. The red is coming because this is in Lightroom. This is the only way I can show you this. Lightroom displays highlights as red, and you'll see here in a few minutes, it displays um, underexposure as blue. All right, that's the only reason you're seeing that. I'm sorry about that. Now, Charmaine, if you don't see any blinking on the back of your uh, viewfinder, keep turning your shutter speed down even more until you make it overexposed. Okay, and there you go. Jody says on the Canon it blinks black, which I wasn't sure of that. Okay, Jessica, I'm, I'm, you got that. Now, I'm sorry about that, folks. So, once again, you're seeing red because that's just the only way I can display this to you and make you understand it or help you understand. Because Lightroom displays highlights in red and it displays underexposure in blue. All right. On the back of your camera, though, you'll be seeing the little blinky. That's what you'll be seeing, Jessica, because you have a Nikon. And it does. It blinks white, right, Jeff, is how it blinks on the D700. Okay. So as long as you guys are seeing the blinking, you understand now that what that's telling you. The camera's screaming at you going, fix me, fix me. You know, you're getting highlights. It's blown out. All right. Let's go ahead and take a shot now. Now we're at 1 100th. So again, I'm not touching anything else. I'm not turning the light off. <coughs> I'm not turning the light off. I'm not changing my aperture. All I changed was my shutter speed. Very, very simple. Now, in Azure, you can see a little bit of blue there on the bottom. And all that's shown, it's a little bit underexposed. There's a reason in life people tell you it's better to have an underexposed picture than an overexposed picture. Here's the reason. You can't fix something that's not there. And that's, unfortunately, that's what myself and a few other folks uh, told these, uh, told this one lady on. And I don't remember who took that shot with the, uh, the girl with the nose there. It was blown out. But And, Jeff, I'm not sure of that. Maybe, um, maybe Jake the Snake can answer that. I don't have a D700. So I don't know what you toggle. Uh, toggle. Oh, you're saying on the back there's a button for it. I got you, Jeff. Okay, very good. All right. <coughs> now, let's just show you here what's going to happen really quickly, and you probably already got this in your head. If you pick your camera up out of the bag, and for some strange reason, I don't know why, something happened, um, 
and you have it set to f800 eight hundredths of a second speed one eight hundredth of a second shutter speed you grab the bag you grab the camera you got you shoot and you're like well there's a beautiful picture can't be overblown now nah, right yeah but look what happened to it we just totally underexposed that picture now if you underexposed by that much it's probably just as bad as overexposing although we could fix that we can't fix the under or the overexposed so I think everybody's actually okay on that. I don't think we're confused. I think we're doing fine. All this with your camera. And I'm going to take my shutter speed and take it back down now. I'm going to actually take it. What we're going to discuss now is actually uh, what's known as sync speed. And we're going to show you how that can hurt you or, or, or help you. But what that actually tells you is these cameras. And, you know, I teach these classes live a lot all over the place. And we get into it with these cameras. And you're spending a ton of money for these cameras, these lenses. You have all this gear. And you go out there and people turn it on that little green thing. Auto. Must be good. Well, it can't because you're not making those creative shots. You're letting the camera. You might as well send the camera out to soft to photograph whatever you want to photograph. You can stay home. It's smart enough. It'll take the pictures. That's what it does. The camera on auto, it wants to take pictures that are totally exposed, that are very much in focus. And... It doesn't want you to vary from that. It doesn't want you to do that background, uh, that uh, exposing for the sky. And we could talk about that also. Now. Okay, but Eric's also confused, uh, not just about highlights on his camera, about something else there. So you can maybe let me know what else is going on there, Eric, what you're confused about. And I'll address it here as we go because, like I said, there is a slight delay when I talk and when you guys are actually getting it. <clears throat> right exactly Jeff when you're looking for creative shots and when you're getting paid for this camera and you're getting paid for your talent to go out there and shoot if it's snapshots and if it's my wedding I'd probably just hand everybody one of those disposable cameras and say can you please just take snapshots through the night and we're going to collect all these and we'll go ahead and get them developed it's going to cost a lot less than getting me to come out with these 35mm DSLRs and all my gear I think people expect something more out of you, right? Because now you're the professional photographer. You're getting paid. You're the professional. I don't care if it's a friend giving you $100. You're the professional. You're the one with the camera. When everybody sees you go up and you're taking pictures at the altar, they move away. You're the, you're the person, okay? All right. Good deal. Now, now we're going to look at is we're going to look at flash photography. And we're going to talk about sync speed. I'm going to show you how that will kill you. When you're using flash on these cameras, okay, if you're using a flash on the top, we get away with something called TTL. And we've talked about that in the past. TTL is through the lens metering. Where the camera is much smarter than we are, you settle on TTL, you take a picture, the meter is going to go through the lens. It's going to meter that subject and say, oh, we just need a little burst of light. And it'll give you just a burst of light. You're not going to get any highlights. It's going to do its job. Once you take that flash off that camera where it should be, shouldn't be on there, and you start using things like this, these wireless triggers, now we're going to start shooting in manual mode with the flash. Now we have to understand how can we control the amount of light we have with the camera because you don't want to run to the flash all the time, especially if you have two or three flash heads, and you don't want to set power on those. You know, up, down, up. Unless you have an assistant, that's their job is to run around. Let's control with the camera. Let's take a look at that. And to do that now, you don't control it with shutter speed. We have to control it with aperture. And let me show you why. And put this on there. Let me turn my flash unit on. <coughs> we'll turn the light on. Now we're going to turn this uh, flash unit on here. Get my wireless trigger turned on. And even though I was using it this morning, I used to. I like to make sure it's on and working. Okay, it is working good. There we go. All right, let me bring back up my desktop here. First, let me tell you about sync speed. What sync speed is, is sync speed is the maximum cameras, maximum shutter speed on your camera that will capture the flash as it's going off. That's sync speed. If you get above that sync speed, you're going to have a, basically what happens is the bottom curtain, because on a flat, on a, and I should show you on the camera right here. Yeah. 
basically your shutter has a top and bottom shutter. When you take a picture, those both open very rapidly and shut. Okay. What happens is now is basically if you get above that sweet spot for that sync speed for your flash unit or your camera, you're going to catch your, capture the bottom shutter basically as it's closing. All right, because you're, it's going to open, so it's going to leave a black line in your picture. That is exactly why we cannot control flash or our strobes with our shutter speed. We have to control it with our aperture. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and snap a picture here, and I'm going to show you this. <coughs> I'm going to try to make it as dramatic as I can. I didn't test this, but I'm going to say I know my sync speed on my camera and flashing it is one two fiftieth of a second. That's most of them. Most photographers out there will tell you it's safe to go by one two hundredth of a second. Then you know you're good to go. But I like that little bit faster shutter speed. Just because if I can do it, I'm going to do it. Let's see if we can't get a picture out of here. And right there, you already see some of that black on there. Let me make it even more, um, come up even higher. You're not hurting the camera at this point. You're just not, the shutter's just too fast for the flash. There you go. So this is exactly what happens when, you're, when your shutter speed is too fast. You're trying to control those highlights with your shutter. And you're like, crap, now Jack told me my shutter can control highlights. Yeah, if it's ambient light, not if it's strobe. If it's strobe or flash, we have to then use our aperture. Okay, the aperture is the f-stops. Now, I'm going to take my speed there. You can watch on that bar on the top here again. Let's take our speed back down to 1 250th of a second. All right, I'm going to take my shot. Let's see it there in just a second coming through. And good, Jessica, it's making sense. That's good. That's what I wanted. I knew. When I sat last night and I worked on this class today, I thought, this is the class of all time. This is probably one of my... Uh, uh, most uh, thought out class as far as showing you guys how this works anyway uh, good I'm glad everybody's getting it all right I wish you could too I wish I could fly all you folks in for an actual sit down class that would be wonderful all right let's see here this is 1 250th of a second and my f stop my sh my aperture is 2.8 now every time we go up an aperture I'm going to leave the shutter speed alone and watch the aperture go up. There's 3.2. This is also equal to one stop of light. All right. Let's take a picture. Again, I'm not touching my strobe. I'm not touching my light. We're not changing the power settings. You know, that's a lot of work. I don't know if you guys shoot strobes or not, but... It's, it's definitely a lot of work because you go out there and you're trying to shoot this stuff and you're, you know... Oh, let's run over and reset that strobe. You know, if I'm at a wedding and my assistant's up by the uh, altar with the with the light on a light pole and it's up above the, you know, sometimes they hold it on a monopod. Um, not a very good idea for me to run up. Okay, lower that down. Let me take it down by a little power. Let me raise the power. I can control with f-stops. All right, let's go up now. We're gonna go up another stop here. I'm gonna go up two stops to show you how this is, and for the lack of or for the uh, better use of time, we'll go to f4. Again, look at the shutter speed. It stays at one two fiftieth of a second. And there's f4. Look how the red or your blinkies, that's what that would be, is actually starting to pull apart. It's actually becoming better exposed is what's happening. And then I start jumping two or three at a time because, again, you got the bride standing there. You got a, oh, somebody standing in front of you. Hey, you guys ever photograph your kids? If you guys ever photograph your kids, um, you don't want to sit there going, okay, uh, mommy or daddy's going up. One more stop, honey. Okay, one more stop, honey. Okay. They're like, forget you. I'm out of here, right? So we got we to gotta dial this in really quickly. So look at that and go up a couple stops. Take a picture grab that picture and see where we're at and you can see now look how it's actually coming down you see there's a little a lot 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 less red a lot less red on there 
All right. So now we're going to go... We're going to go to F9. I made a big jump now. Take a picture. And let's have a look at that one. <coughs> now at that point, to me, that looks very, very good. You can see it's not underexposed. There's no blue in there. There's no red in there. It's not overexposed. I'm at F9. If you want to, for one reason or another, you say, well, it's a little dull. Maybe I want it to be a little bit brighter. Try to go back to F8. If you want to. You can always raise it. You can always intensify a little bit when you're in Photoshop. But this is at F8. Right there. And you can see we just have a highlight coming off of the back of that uh, black desk lamp there that I'm shooting around. So that's where that comes from. So... Hopefully you uh, picked up something there. Let me uh, put this camera down here. All right, so hopefully you picked up something from that lesson. I mean, that's that's a lot to take in in that very short, basically half hour that I was uh, presenting that to you. Um, but if you have any questions, throw them up in the chat room now. I'd love to see those questions come through. Um, it's you know, it's it's a, not a very hard concept. Even when I was learning this stuff, it's like okay. If it's ambient, if it's just normal lighting, if I don't have any flashes or anything, then at that point, I would just use um, I would just use my shutter speed. So if I'm outside, I don't have any flashes or anything, use the shutter speed. Somebody asked earlier, by the way, let me touch base with you on that real quick here because I want you to understand this. If you're outside, if you have a flash, all right, that's where these triggers come in handy because you want to get these flashes off of the cameras. And you can buy whatever trigger you want. There's a lot of different ones. Um, I know uh, you guys all know Kevin. He bought a set. I don't know what set Jessica has. There's a lot of different ones you can buy. And uh, triggers are worth their weight in gold because you want to get the flash off the camera. Let's talk about that for just a brief second. Just a second here. What I mean by that is this flash, I've got a receiver on the bottom of it. You can see the receiver flashing right there. I think you can see that. Anyway, <clears throat> what this allows me to do is even if I get somebody somewhere to hold the flash like this, you know, uh, maybe it's your assistant or somebody at a wedding or maybe it's a relative. You want them to hold the flash over or hold it over here or hold it up here. Remember, the, remember way back, look at the videos from the, the pioneer days. Remember when they had the powder flash pans? They never put it on top of the camera. What did they do? They moved it over here. They knew. Those guys knew. Those were photographers. It can't be here because it makes the person flat. You want to get it over here because it brightens the face up. So what you would do is you would expose for the sky and get the sky exposed. And when you take a picture, what's going to happen? The person's going to be silhouetted. I love those shots. I think they're amazing, and, and I like taking them. But wonder if you didn't want the person silhouetted. It's a beautiful bride and her husband. Uh, you take them out to a beautiful lake. You get a nice picture, and, and you bring it up on your screen you're like uh-oh they're silhouetted now you're going to sell it to them because it's beautiful it's a nice picture but they you know mom and dad want to see them they want to see it mom and dad paid you the money that's where this flash comes in handy you take this thing now i would use i use an umbrella when i'm outside or a soft box but take it off move it away from the bride or groom or have somebody hold it up over and then take your shot even though you're exposed for the side for the sky this light's going to light them up and then you're going to get some really pretty fill light. And it's going to be really nice across their face. You're not going to have her face flat. It's really, really important. Let me turn this off. So hopefully you understand this now, why you want this. Um, you know, a lot of people, you go out. I have a light bag now I carry around. We went to a soccer match yesterday. I took my light bag. Because you just don't know what you're going to need when you're out there. <coughs> These wireless triggers in this particular flash unit stay in my camera bag with me all the time. And it's just something I like to carry around with. There's a little stand that you can even stand this on the ground if you need to just to get a little bit of strobe light up at somebody. So it's a really, really great little tool to have. Did I shut that off? Yes. And you know that, folks. Photography is just that. I mean, it's like the great big money pit is what photography is. But to me, it's just like if I was an auto mechanic. You know, I go to my auto mechanic and... He has tools probably he hasn't used in 20 years. He might have bought it and say, oh, I was going to replace the transmission and I used this particular 
wrench or whatever, and maybe he's never used it again. You have to have those tools in your bag, and you have to prepare for anything that's going to hit you out there. If you get out and it's a bright sunny day, and you're standing at a beautiful lake, and you want to get a nice picture, and you don't have a flash, guess who's out? You are. Not the people standing there. You're the one that missed a shot. Okay. So, Jake the Snake said uh, Trig Masters are $58 a pair, and I'm sure you can find them on Amazon.com. Um, and Peter uh, always wants me to get out and uh, come to the UK, and my wife said she would love to come there. We've been trying to figure out how do you actually, uh, Jody talked about we need a convention. We talked about how do you come out, how do we get, how do we get that word out? If I'm going to come to a hotel and teach a course, how do I get that word out to everybody saying, hey, look, I'm going to be there. Um, we need X amount of people to sign up for this course. You know, we have to pay for the room and everything uh, to be able to teach a live course. I would love to do that. My wife's on board. She's ready to go. She likes to travel, and we like to get out and move around. So it's something we really, really want to do. These are nice because I get to reach out to a lot of you folks. It's just really nice, too, to be able to get out there and actually teach you live. Do live shots. Look at your cameras. I can understand, experiment with you show you the lighting, set it up for you, and teach you how to do that. It's hard to do that on these shows. Okay, we had a couple questions in the chat room that I am going to address here before uh, we give the assignment, before we kick out of here, just to cover this. <coughs> um, iSnap said, what, time of, what type of flash did I recommend earlier? Uh, we always, as photographers, recommend your, you know, your Nikon, your Canons. Uh, if you can, you know, if you can readily drop that kind of money. You don't have to do that. This company, I've been really, really thrilled with this, and I don't recommend stuff that I don't actually own um, because that way I can test it out. And I've had pe companies call me it's like, oh, would you, would you tell people about our service or our product? And I said, no, because I didn't test it. But I bought one of these. This is a newer. Now, there's some other companies that make it. This is a newer uh, N-E-E-W-E-R. This is a TT520 flash. They make a bunch of different flashes, but this just happens to be the 520. I do recommend it. I like it. It was 30 bucks. Couldn't go wrong. I mean, especially for a secondary, it works as a slave or a third flash or a fourth. You can load your bag up with these things. All right. The next question I had, somebody in here said, Andy Taylor. So would you use two or three stops under for your fill flash? You may, but here's the trick is with the fill flash, Andy. Um, at least I don't, you don't have to meter for that. That's one of those things you're going to fill it. And you can take a look. Um, and let's take that back a little bit. Let me, uh, if you have a light meter, okay, which I actually ordered one a couple weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for it to arrive. But if you have a light meter, you have your strobes up, you can take a meter reading and see what the actual flash output is. That would give you that same kind of fill that TTL would give you. Uh, but it's an off flash. <coughs> and then all you got to do is, folks, if you're taking that picture and the sky, you look at it, and the sky still looks too bright, what would you do? What would you do, folks? If the sky looked too bright, you took a picture, what? Change your aperture? No, 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 no. Now you're working two lines of the fence here. We're working our flash with our aperture, and we're working our ambient light, our skyline, with our shutter speed. Right. So when you take that and you look, you say, that's a little bright. Crank your shutter speed up a little bit. Give it a little bit more shutter speed. Now remember, here's the, the key. Don't take your shutter speed past that 1 250th of a second because then we're going to get that half shutter coming up and you're going to get that black on the bottom of your picture. And you won't need that. Outside, you're going to be able to turn that background down way down, probably with 1 200th, and it's going to be almost dark. Um, I've done a lot of them. It looks really, really good. <coughs> The next question here I've seen, uh, somebody sent, uh, Brian. Brian said, uh, does the highlights only show, does the highlight alert only show after you take the picture? Yes, that is correct. So take your picture, look at it, go, ah, uh, it's blinking. I got to, I got to fix this. I got to do something. Because if we leave it blink and we just keep snapping, you're going to go home and there's not going to be a lot of detail for you to play with and you're going to be losing a lot of sleep trying to edit <coughs> Trust me, folks, I've done it. You can't put something back that's not there, right? Open a, open a cookie jar one day and look in. If there's no cookies and close it, open it tomorrow. Will there be any cookies? Nope. It's empty. It's just the same thing with highlights. 
You blow it out, it's blown, it's gone, bye. Okay, there you go. Um, it happens a lot of times. It happens to me with skylines. I do it a lot. But that's exactly why I talked to you folks a while back. And uh, look at my YouTube video on how to replace a blown out sky with a blue sky. It's so easy that you can do it in 10 seconds. So if it happens, it happens. You can fix that. You can't fix a bride. Okay, let's see. Oh, and I'm sorry, Eric, if I didn't, I don't know when you might have posted that. Um, the trick is, folks, everybody, here's the trick. When you post this stuff on there, make sure on the comment or on the title of the picture when you post it, put on there assignment or homework. And I'm sorry if I missed it. I've done it in the past, and I really, really feel bad that I missed yours, Eric. But and I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll dig even deeper. But I go through those in the morning, and I go back through all those Facebook posts. We're trying to figure out a better way to submit your pictures. And I think I have a way coming uh, through my website. I think I could do it, and we're going to see what file size you can have. But I think you guys can actually submit them, and I may be able to download them all at one time. So we're going to work on that. Okay, your assignment this week is very, very simple. This is going to be so easy. You guys are going to be like, oh, Jack, why would you do this? It's too easy. I can't stand it. <coughs> You're going to take two pictures. You're going to submit the first picture two of the exact picture. The first picture, since you know how to create highlights or how to get rid of them, you're going to make one. So take a picture and blow something out. And then I want a picture after that with on the picture with your text because we're great with text now. We don't need to use that. Just regular text on there. Put on there your settings, your aperture, your shutter speed, and what it was initially to, to make that picture best. So we're going to have a highlighted picture with blown out, and we're going to have a perfectly exposed picture beside it. It's very, very easy homework. Okay, Eric, and you didn't title homework. I'm sorry. All you got to do, folks, once again, for now, when you put this on Facebook, put on top of it homework or assignment because as I'm going through, those are my key. That's what I key on when I'm going through downloading these things at 5 o'clock in the morning when I start these shows preparing. Okay, so with that said, I am going to go back here, and we are going to... <laughs> Charmaine said, uh, maybe it's not easy. That's going to show me, Charmaine, if you know and understand highlights and how to fix those. You guys can do this. Blow a picture out and then fix it. Give me your settings. And then we'll display them both. Somehow we'll get those and we'll put them both together on the screen. And we'll show everybody what those look like. The three things I wanted on the second picture. Okay, the second picture. You have your blown out picture here. The second picture... Put on there your f-stop, your shutter speed, and your ISO setting, which should be 100 anyway, unless you're doing something crazy, but that's fine. Once again, folks, I'd like to thank you for joining me each and every week here at Jack's Tech Corner for Photography Weekly. These are not only beneficial to you, believe me, these are also as much beneficial to me. I learn with you, and I learn from you, and that's a two-way street. I ask that you do pay it forward. If I teach you something, don't keep it to yourself and hide it and hold on to it. Go out and spread that. You know, tell the people how to use their cameras. Or better yet, tell them, hey, come over to Jack's Tech Corner on Sunday mornings and watch the live show. I think that's another way you could tell them. Or tell them to come to our Facebook group, you know. And there's a lot of people there that's going to help them out. I looked this morning. We're up to almost 190 people. So people are learning about photography and they want to learn with us. And that's great. So now you know a little bit more about shutter speed, aperture, how to control ambient light and flash just by using your camera. Don't touch that light source. Do it in the camera. Understand that camera. Know why you spent the money. And make your spouse know why you spent that money at the dinner table. Say, look what I can do. That's why we spent all this money for that great camera. So until next week, as always, folks, I always tell you, keep those shutters clicking. Keep the editors editing. And join us back here next Sunday for another Photography Weekly. Until then, so long for now, and get out there and shoot. I'll see you then. Bye.